Hello everyone and welcome to the Tourist Trek where we're here because there was a huge, huge news drop in the Disney Cruise Line world. They Disney released on uh, International Wish Day. Yeah. Some really cool concept art for the Disney Wish. And we thought it would be a good idea to go over it and just kind of look at it as uh, we are Disney Cruise Line nerds uh, ourselves, and I know a lot of you are as well. Um, just to kind of take a look at it, peruse it, see what they've posted. Um, this was a huge, huge um, information overload, like way longer than I thought it was going to be. And if you don't know what International Wish Day is, um, it is Make-A-Wish Day pretty much. So Make-A-Wish um, gives terminally ill kids a uh, trip of a lifetime. It could be to Disney, it could be to somewhere else, it doesn't matter. I've seen some videos where they go to Alani and um, they've gone to like other Disney parks. So um, that's why this is actually a really big deal is because the Disney Wish is um, named after Make-A-Wish yeah. Foundation. Mm -hmm. So this is like a huge thing. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool and, and it was advertised as a um, premier YouTube video. So I think it dropped yesterday at on Thursday. Oh yeah. At eleven a.m. Yes, eleven a.m. And I uh, texted Brandon. I was downstairs. So I was like, Gah! <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. And and it started off as just kind of like an advertisement for Disney parks and stuff like that. And then like ten minutes in, it turned into a twenty-five minute um, one after the other after the other concept art that Disney's been holding out on us. But yeah. Um, I figure we'll go over. We'll look at it. We'll give our thoughts. Uh, leave a comment down below on what you guys think. So if you're ready, I say we go take a look at the Disney Wish. So the video goes on and on about um, like Disney parks and stuff like that, but then it really kicks on uh, about 10 minutes into the video where we see our first, like, I guess you could say like one of the grand reveals, a lot of this was CGI, but a lot of the grand reveals of um, the Disney Wish sailing on the ocean. And let me tell you what, it looks beautiful. It oh looks beautiful. Gosh. But interestingly enough, it's about the same size as the Fantasy Class I was going to ask you when we watched. Yeah, I wasn't sure what, how big it was. Where I'm seeing a big difference just aesthetically on it is when you look at the picture, you can see the veranda rooms. There's two oh, yeah. columns where they kind of bulge out. Yeah. Um, otherwise, size-wise, it's about the same size as the um, Disney Fantasy and Disney Dream. Is Deck 4 still there, you think? Yeah, uh, yeah Deck 4 okay. is definitely there. So interestingly enough, uh, Chairman of Disney Parks and Resorts, Josh Tomorrow, did happen to say that Disney, the Disney Wish will end up being the cleanest, um, environmentally friendly ship of their fleet. It's actually going to be the first one of the Disney Cruise Line to run on liquefied natural gas, or LNG. And I remember a while back uh, some news outlets reporting that Port Canaveral was retrofitting some of their ports to accommodate um, LNG-powered ships. I think Carnival is going to have one as well, if I'm not mistaken. So um, they're trying to retrofit a lot of the ports to accommodate it, so that leads me to believe that the wish will end up calling Port Canaveral home for a while yeah. um, because not every port can handle uh, LNG powered vessels. So that was so really that cool. means the wish is going to be at Port Canaveral. That's more than likely. I think that's kind of what they're leading toward if they haven't already announced it. So they start the video by releasing information on the entertainment deck or the top deck of the ship uh, where they actually have a new attraction, not the aqueduct, but they call it the Aqua Mouse. <laughs> uh, it says you'll be immersed in the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse animated shorts aboard the first ever Disney attraction at sea. Um, complete. So is it gonna be like kind of more like um, like Crushing Rusher at Typhoon Lagoon, where it's like a it's a roller like coaster. a water roller coaster? Yeah. Well, I think Aqueduct's kind of like that right now. There's some areas where it, it goes up. Yeah. Um, but this looks like it's going to have some show elements into it. It looks like, according to the concept art, uh, which I got right here, it looks like they've got video screens on the inside, which would yeah. be kind of cool. Um, so my guess is as you're going up, you'll be seeing the movie screens. And it's based off the new um, Mickey Mouse shorts, um, the new art style, kind of like what Mickey's Runway Railway is kind of based off of. Yeah. Um, it says new show scenes, lighting, special effects, and spe splash-tacular surprises. Um, and it says zigzag and zoom through 760 feet 
of winding tubes suspended high above the upper deck. So that looks really cool. So on this screen grab, you can actually see they've completely reimagined the way the family pools are yeah. situated. So oh, instead of having like little hot tubs, yeah, yeah, instead of having like um, one large pool, it looks like they've kind of separated it out. So you got like your jacuzzis on top, you got your splash pads, you got showers, and it looks like you've got the main smaller pool, I guess. So instead of having one giant one where everyone's crammed inside of it, it looks like they've kind of spaced it out into several pools. No and Mickey I, pool though. No Mickey pool, yeah. Well, I think that's because they've got some other cool themed pools coming up here shortly. Oh yeah. Uh, but lots of sun lounging areas. So that that's cool to see. Um, looks like they even have some areas up at the top right the and left corner for seating in the shade. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty it looks gorgeous actually. A uh, lot of levels. I like that. I like that. It may not be easy to navigate around the ship because you might be on one level and then you have to go up steps and now you're on two levels up, but we'll see how that is once it opens. Um, they also mentioned that little ones will delight in an all new Toy Story themed district. Um, it's interesting that they call them districts. It's kind of strange, um, but it's it designed. It kind of reminds me of like the adult lounges where it's yeah. like district, district. Yeah, oh, the district. I think it was what it was mm -hmm. called. Um, Toy Story themed district designed specifically for families with toddlers and young children. Uh, this whimsical water wonderland will include a splash zone, wading pool, and family water slide, uh, water slide and smoothie bar. So they smoothie bar. I missed that part in the <laughs> yeah. video. So it's kind of neat. It looks like it's Cute. definitely themed to Toy Story, and you can see that they've got the little green alien. Um, What's it say? It says collar is a thin stripe. I think it's just like the animation detail. I think it's like gonna be like animation though, because it's not. Mm -hmm. They're not colored in. No, no, it's it's kind of cool looking. Um, and then you've got. <laughs> I, I don't know what that is. It's is that. That's um bullseye. bullseye. Bullseye is a water duck. That's pretty like a funny. Water. <laughs> a little water ducky. That's actually really funny. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, and I would see up in the top right hand corner, you can actually see Buzz Lightyear. I'm sure and you can, can see Zerg. Yeah, those. I would imagine you can probably squirt each other with that. That looks pretty fun. So yeah, a splash zone for the kids. Um, and it looks as though that's a little bit further back from the main area. It doesn't look like it's like right, right up in there, right up in there, because it can get a little hectic on the main decks on the fantasy class ships. Um, and then it says adults will indulge in sun drenched serenity at Quiet Cove, um, which we know Quiet Cove is on the uh, ships as, on the other ships as well. It's Usually, a, Quiet Cove's in the inside, like the coffee part. Yeah, like right near yeah. um, the Cove Bar. Um, a peaceful refuge dedicated to lounging, sipping, and soaking, set away from the bustle of family activities. I like that. And uh, this secluded adults-only district will feature a luxurious infinity pool. That's cool. Is there? That's really cool. There's not an infinity pool. No. On any of the other ones. Um, well, I mean, you got like the little jacuzzi thing, but it's not like. But a that's pool. not. Yeah. yeah. Um, and poolside bar and chic cafe. So when we look at the image there oh my God, it's, it's so I cool. the first thing I noticed about this is that it's receded all the way to the aft of the ship whereas before it was kind of like nestled middle. in the middle right before like on the fantasy class it's like right after the the midship and right before the the true aft and now now no like because there was always rooms that mm -hmm. they would have to like if they wanted to get certain places, they'd have to. Kids would have to go through. Yeah. Now there's going to be no kids. Yeah. So interestingly enough, it looks as though the placement of Quiet Cove is further back on the aft, almost where Satellite Falls is located on yeah. the Fantasy and Dream. So um, there's your infinity pool, and it actually looks like it like it's a gradual one, so you can kind of yeah. walk in, and then it drops off. So. But then it's got, or is it you go in off the side, and that's seats. That could be it. That, that, that could be because it's on that side too. That could See? be seats, or yeah, it could be like lounging seats in the water. That looks really cool. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, I'm sure there's a poolside bar right underneath the overhang that we can't see. Um, so that's really neat. Where's the coffee bar? Is there a coffee bar? <laughs> well, I think they said the chic cafe. Yeah. The chic cafe. And then on Disney Parks blog, they have a whole article about this. Um, and we'll put a link to that in the description box down below. And that's why we're looking this way and making sure yeah. we're not missing anything. Yes, because was, this was jammed packed with uh, concept art. They even have uh, like a whole 
segment devoted toward the different culinary um, shows and culinary restaurants that you'll be experiencing because as we know that each ship has their own kind of unique um, dining uh, themes. I think these, the ones we're going over now are the everybody restaurants. Yes, yes. So you've got the um, the family style restaurants. You've got Arendelle, a frozen dining adventure. Um, it's Disney's first frozen themed theatrical dining experience. So I feel like this is going to be a lot like um, like Tangled. Yeah, which on, we haven't seen. Yep, and uh, Princess and the Frog, Tiana's yeah. Place. I think this is this is going to be a lot like that. But their their movies have music, but mm -hmm. I think it's going to be more Elsa throwing snow everywhere. <laughs> I'm not All sure. All over your food. Yeah. And it says through live immersive entertainment featuring favorite characters such as Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, and Olaf and world-class cuisine infused with Nordic influences. So that's interesting, Nordic flavored food. So I guess you're getting the steak. Yes, so that's <laughs> interesting. That's actually, uh, that's that's the first deviation from the typical type of menu that they have. Uh, Nordic will be interesting. I'm well, a, is Tiana's place like New Orleans stuff? I think so, like Cajun style. Yeah. I mean, so I've never been on it, so. It's some way different. Yeah. I'm excited to see, I hoping they would say like, I want to know at least one dish. Like, <laughs> one I want to know. So the real question is, which one of these uh, dining establishments are going to carry the black truffle pasta per sets? Because that's my favorite dish on any Disney cruise line. It's going to be on. <laughs> I would think we'll, we'll get to it. I think, I'll tell you where I think it's going to be. The uh, next one that they listed off is the Worlds of Marvel, mm -hmm. which, folks, by the way, I'm super stoked for this oh one. God. Like, I, I, we all know that like Disney plans things out and they they experiment with certain things. And I definitely think Marvel Day at Sea and the success of Marvel Day at Sea yeah. helped contribute to this. And they were definitely testing the waters to see how people responded to it, if they liked the menu, because they gave a specific menu for that. I wonder if it'll be different stuff than what you see at Marvel Day at Sea. Not that we've done it that, might. so we won't know, but. yeah. But yeah, the Worlds of Marvel is the first ever Marvel cinematic dining adventure where you'll play an interactive role in an action-packed Avengers mission that unfolds around you, complete with a worldly menu inspired by the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know what? I, I'm seeing a pattern here. It's What's a that? lot of shows. Yeah, it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Disney dining is like on cruises aren't relaxing anyway <laughs> so i guess you might as well make a show so here's a picture of very the vague, lobby <laughs> vague picture it doesn't look like they're showing anything else but the lobby but interestingly enough do you see that in the background behind the kid's shoulder pym pym yeah pym technologies that's but from then you got iron man's thing at the top yep mm -hmm. so this looks really cool and i actually really like the rock work yeah on the 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 entryway there it, it's i'm super stoked for this honestly i really really am i think this is going to be a really cool addition i guess that means i can get that black widow dress yeah you can get a black <laughs> widow dress now and you can wear it on the disney wish so yeah that was really exciting to hear and then finally the third um rotational dining i should we should really call these rotational dining because that's what they are oh i'm not rotating i'm just saying at marvel <laughs> is 1923 which is named for the year that Walt Disney founded the Walt Disney Company. Uh, it's an elegant celebration of the company's legacy, paying homage to the golden age of animation and offering a tasteful tribute to its Californian heritage with dishes inspired by the state's unique fusion of cultural flavors. So the first thing that comes to mind when I see this place is Carthay Circle out in California Adventures and... Um, very much like that style. So you look around and it's got like that old Hollywood feel to it. But you also, so for me, what I see is the animation on there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's gonna change, you know, into color like, like art, Animator's yeah. Palette, but I think they took a lot from Animator's Palette mm -hmm. and made it sophisticated Disney. <laughs> yes, this is very sophisticated like our Disney. House. <laughs> <laughs> very sophisticated Disney. No, this yeah. looks really awesome. This literally looks like you're being transported back in time. Look at the way the, the crew members um, 
like attire, like their costume. It's very, very elegant. This I feel like I could be sitting at a table and eating dinner with Mr. Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah, like that's right? what it looks like. It looks like- And it's got that art deco design. Like when you look up at the top there. Yeah. Like, and I kind of imagine that this is what Club 33 looks like. That's true. And I've, I've been to Club 33 once in my lifetime out in Disneyland. And it was a long time ago. I vaguely remember it kind of looking like this. I don't know if it was as dark colored, um, but it was like, it was truly an experience. It was really yeah. neat. Um, let's see. And then they went on to talk about the different entertainment and the shows um, where we saw our first glimpse of the Walt Disney Theater, which interestingly enough is very green. Um, they show basically the stage is green. There's a lot of green here. It's beautiful. But they said that the inspiration behind it was very much like a forest. And I don't know why forest. I, well, they just built in Tokyo Disneyland the Forest Theater. Something, I forget what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's in Tokyo Disneyland and it's um, themed in a forest sort of way. Okay. And I'm wondering if they're like, well, that's cool, so let's put it on. The I mean, even down to like, you'll see in this picture here, they've got what looks like branches yeah. as the gold lattice on the green. And even down on the posts, you can see what looks like leaves or appears yeah. to be leaves. This looks really cool. This but like if you think of like fairy tales, just mm -hmm. in general, you think forest. of forest. Magical, mystical so, forest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that might be what they're going for. It says that the Walt Disney Theater is an opulent show palace that will come alive with original Broadway style stage productions developed exclusively for the Disney Cruise Line. They also announced that Aladdin and the Genie. I totally thought it was gonna be Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> the Broadway show of Aladdin is fantastic. Yeah. So I've never seen it, but from what I've gathered, it is one of the best ones on Broadway. So to have that on a Disney Cruise Line is pretty impressive. Um, they also talk about the Grand Hall, which I'm assuming is the atrium when you first come in, which was yeah. very interesting. So the first thing I noticed when I saw this is that this is a complete revamp of the way that we see the atriums on the ship. Because where yeah. we're looking at right now is typically the elevators. Yeah. But I like what they did here. Instead of elevators? having the, well, I'm sure they're a little bit further back, yeah. but I don't think this is really a show stage for like big shows. I think this is a show stage for like the musicians, the live musicians. And like when they did the Halloween tree yeah. and all that, mm -hmm. yeah. These are gonna be like those little, little production shows. Um, but I think that what this is, is like when you, I mean, everybody's experienced it on the ships at some point when you're walking through the atrium and they're playing live music. It's beautiful live music. Problem is it gets very congested in that area at certain times. Mm -hmm. And especially when activities are letting out, and dinners, the dinners are letting out. in mm -hmm. and out, yeah. And that area can get very congested quickly. So I think by having them not play the music next to the statue of the character, but a little bit further back in this like showpiece area, um, I think will alleviate a lot of the stress and traffic in that area, or right. at least kind of get them away from, you know, the restaurant entrance and the. Staircase. And I could see like when you walk in, like when you first walk on the, in the ship. That, like Mickey's gonna be up at the top yeah, or something. I can see that. Yeah, like, Mickey could be like waving Captain Minnie. Like instead of thing. like, you know, bogging it down with meet and greets right away, you mm -hmm. can just have Mickey like waving. Like waving to people. So the chandelier is supposed to look like uh, Cinderella's transformation um, from her rags to her Cinderella blue dress that uh, Fairy Godmother does for her, which is, it's gorgeous. One of the best scenes in that movie. Oh my gosh. In chandelier like, form. <laughs> yeah. Who knew you could do that? I that is know. cool. So that's going to be offer a very unique looking chandelier. Because if you go look at some of the other cruise ships, they have all very unique style chandeliers. And yeah. It's and just it's all, to it. the other ones are all like different mm -hmm. artists. Yep. Uh, kind of made of things. glass made of and then it also talks about Luna uh, which is a brand new entertainment hub that will transition from a daytime setting for family show fun into an elegant evening venue for adult exclusive entertainment offering a variety of live shows and interactive programming throughout the day this just screams the adult area of the ship 
So you've got Europa on the Fantasy, yeah. you've got the District on the Dream. I would imagine that Luna is probably that on the Wish. Yeah. Um, not too much pictures about Luna. There None. was really not a no lot pictures. given about that other than the description of it. Um, but that's what that sounds like. And then Hero Zone, which is a futuristic sports arena where physical activity will blend with imagination during action-packed challenges and game show style competitions for families to take on together. Do you think that is D-Lounge? They didn't D-Lounge? say that on the thing at all, did they? Uh, I can't, I'll have to go back and watch it, did. but... Um, no, I think that's... Um... It says it says show style competitions. Okay. So, so maybe, maybe D-Lounge? They didn't mention D-Lounge at all, but so there may the, not be a D-Lounge on this. The thing, the sports arena is where I'm like, Man, what's weird. that mean? Yeah, there's not a lot of pictures on that. Um, and then they also talked about the cinemas in the Parks blog post. They didn't really talk about it in the video. But the Wonderland and Neverland cinemas. So interesting. Wonderland and Neverland. Do you think that's one cinema or two? I don't know. Read the description. It says... The Wonderland and Neverland cinemas are intimate screening rooms. Rooms. Rooms, so there's two. That will provide you more options than ever to watch classic and first-run films from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilms, and more. So that sounds like there's two two movie theaters on board The Wish, which is pretty impressive because, as we know, the other ships typically have one. But that's kind of cool. It offers a variety, so if you don't want to watch that movie, you could watch this movie instead. They're probably going to be smaller, yeah. would be my guess. But there was no pictures on it at all, but it sounds like it's intricately themed to... I don't even remember that in the... I yeah. mean, I was just crying the whole time anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and then it says, uh, in true Disney Cruise Line fashion, the Disney Wish will offer a robust menu of world-class entertainment throughout every voyage, including spectacular stage shows, exhilarating deck parties, and one-of-a-kind character experiences, fun family activities, contemporary cabarets, and more. They introduced a slide from the atrium into the kids clubs. How cool is that? Okay, so what's cool about this is where is the kids clubs located on the current fantasy ships? They're on the fifth deck. But for this to be a slide from the atrium, they would have to go down, which means that the kids clubs on the Wish are more than likely low. They're at the bottom of the ships. They're not so much high up. And I think that's done intentionally because I think they want to put more staterooms up top. Yeah. So it seems as though that the kids' clubs are probably going to be where Animator's Palette is now on the lower level. Um, Simply speculation. There's nothing confirmed. I'm just thinking that's the first thing that came to my mind when I saw that. I said, well, if they're sliding down, that means that it's got to be below the atrium, Mm -hmm. which is interesting. Because I always wondered what it's like to be in a stateroom on the kids' club level. It's got to be crazy. In the video, they just kind of discuss the different types of themes to the uh, Disney's Oceaneer Club, which is meant for children ages 3 to 12. Um, And then they also talked about on the Parks blog, they brought back It's a Small World Nursery, and they even have Edge and Vibe. So those didn't change. I'm sure the theming within them is probably different, but the names have not changed. Where the big changes come are in the Oceaneer Club, and that's where they have the Marvel superhero academy so more marvel characters i love this so they said marvel superhero academy first mm-hmm. and then later on they're like hey there's marvel for adults too yep and so. then that's when they talked about the restaurant so i thought that was really cool um that that's now a part of rotational dining marvel superhero academy says that it's a high-tech avengers headquarters where young recruits will train to be the next generation of superheroes with the help of their own heroes like Spider-Man, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. And you brought up a good point. You thought it was strange that they mentioned the Wasp. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm -hmm. And like, no Black Widow. No... That's true, but I, you gotta remember, you know, I would imagine they will make an appearance at some point. Yeah. Like... But it's interesting. There's gonna be some sort of theme with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yeah, they're really pushing that yeah. uh, that that character. And you will catch me there at every open house. <laughs> and then, so it looks like you got your fairy tale hall, uh, which is a royal trio of activity rooms where princesses and princes will let their creativity shine at Rapunzel's art studio. That's fun. Read and act out stories at Belle's library and test newfound icy powers at Anna and Elsa's summer house. You can find me there too. It almost seems as though they've determined that Beauty and the Beast and Frozen. Anna and Elsa and Rapunzel are are like the key 
demographic characters that are just really outperforming. I mean, it makes sense. And it, I, I'm happy it is still Beauty and the Beast because it's an older movie. I love But Beauty it's the Beast. amazing. Yeah. So. The music on Beauty and the Beast is fantastic. Yeah. But this is a cool picture. I mean, you can kind of look and see what looks like the art studio in the back. And they've got the lanterns. Obviously, it would probably be a movie screen that's projecting that. The walls but. really rem remind me of Fairy Tale Hall at Magic Kingdom. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. That looks fun. All right, so that, that kind of sums up the um, Fairy Tale Hall. And then they also have the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab, which is a first of its kind opportunity for kids to discover the secrets of Disney Imagineers with hands on activities and inventive experiments. So, what's interesting about this is this is basically, I guess you could say this is where like the Star Wars. Um, part like on the dream they have like the Star Wars the more interactive mm -hmm. this techy is, yeah this although is, Marvel might be techy too it depends yeah. this is cool though because you can uh, supposedly create your own roller coaster and you get to simulate yourself riding it um, they call it the Walt Disney Imagineering Lab because that's how Imagineers um, pre-ride some of these rides they computer generate it and ride it uh, as a simulation so it looks like that's what's going on here you know it might get kids really interested in building rides. Yeah. And then we could have our next Imagineer from the Imagineering Lab. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that pretty much sums up what's in the Oceaneer Club, the three uh, facets of the Oceaneer Club. Um, like I said, it talks about the, it's a small world nursery for babysitting needs, Edge, uh, which is the club for ages 11 to 14, and then Vibe, which is from 14 to 17. Doesn't um, really give details. Yeah, it doesn't but talk too much about it's probably about like that. about the same video games and... Yep. Instead of Skyline Lounge, they're going to have Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge. So what I'm seeing here is they're really, every part of the ship, they're really trying to cram those intellectual properties. Yeah. So instead of having Skyline Lounge, we have Hyperspace Lounge, which is actually really cool because it's a high-end bar styled as a luxurious yacht class spaceship. This richly themed immersive experience will be reserved for adults every evening offering interactive tasting experiences and signature beverages inspired by destination destinations such as Batu, Tatooine, and Mustafar. So that leads me to believe that you'll probably be able to get some sort of alcoholic version of blue milk, green milk, and maybe some of the drinks from Oga's Cantina. It looks like Oga's a little bit. A little bit, yeah. But I like the fact that like you can see the Millennium Falcon swooping in the background. Um, so it's like the same concept with the screen yes. behind them. Yep, the really high resolution so. screen. Um, one of my biggest beefs about the Skyline Lounge is that it was so dark in there. Um, we actually went there on a Cruise Vlog 1, the Disney Fantasy, our, our most popular video we've ever made. Yeah. was us in Skyline Lounge, and it was very dark in there. So yeah. this looks very warm colored, very vibrant, very bright, and uh, can you really go wrong with really exotic drinks from... <laughs> Other worlds. I think that sure, would be really it's cool. Be expensive, but and then they go to the gourmet meals um, or exceptional beverages as an upscale um, dining experience for adults. Where you have to dress fancy like yes. Paolo and Remy. <laughs> yes, but no, there's no Remy on this one. No Remy. There is Paolo, but it's a different variation of Paolo. It looks like it's Paolo's Steakhouse, which is an evolution of the Paolo restaurant that Disney cruisers know and love. Now combining the relaxed, sophisticated, sophisticated Disney, sophisticated Disney, <laughs> of authentic Italian dining with the classic refinement of a modern steakhouse in a genteel setting, inspired by Cogsworth, the tale's majordomo turned enchanted clock. That was a word. That was quite a word. <laughs> um, but no, this is really cool looking. So here we have Apollo Steakhouse, and you can see. Definitely live action version of Cogsworth. Sophisticated Disney. Sophisticated Disney. The O in Paulo is Cogsworth. Yeah, I did not notice that the first What's time. The A though. Is I think anything? it's just I think it's just like a door. Yeah. Oh maybe. Yeah. Or maybe his um his oh, door. Oh it is his door. Yeah. That's cute. So that's a cool, unique logo. I like that. Now a steakhouse, as you know, if you've seen any of our cruise vlogs, I We're love finally gonna get to steak. go to one of these. So I am totally on board with going to Paulo's steakhouse. Like <laughs> that sounds amazing. But yeah, that's that pretty cool. And then there's another picture that they showed of um Paulo's steakhouse. 
Is that um, the same one? Yep, that's the same one. And look at that view. Oh, that's going to be really nice. This looks yeah. absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It's, it, he's the only thing in there that's Disney, though. Yeah. Noticed. So it's it's that it's that elegant, like you said, sophisticated Disney, where it's there. We knew it was coming. It's there, but you really have to look for it. It's very subtle. And then the next one is Enchante. Did I say that right? I think so. Enchante. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll offer the most luxurious dining experience on board, featuring a gourmet menu crafted by the three Michelin starred chef, uh, Chef Arnaud. Lalement? Lalement. I don't know. <laughs> I took French years, 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 years ago. This romantic and intimate venue evokes the dazzling spirit of the film's Candelabra Lumiere. So if you look in this picture here, definitely very, very classy. Um, this, I would imagine, is French cuisine, right? I would think so, yeah. I would think so. Um, don't see any hidden... Disney details in this. He's got roses on the... Yeah, it's very, very, very subtle. It looks like this is probably going to be where Remy is on some of the fantasy uh, shifts. Uh, so you got Remy and Paulo yeah. on the fantasy class. And here you have Enchante and Paulo's well, Steakhouse. Enchant yeah, yeah. Which I think is really cool that they have one side be Cogsworth and one side be Lumiere. I did Since... find Lumiere. He's the oh, yeah. T in You're Enchante. Right. He is the T. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So yeah, that'll be really cool um, having that on the ship as well. And then, as we all know, on the fantasy, they have, or on the fantasy and the dream, they have a bar that's wedged right in between Paulo and Remy. And here, it looks like they did the same thing, but it's actually called the Rose which is a chic lounge at the entrance of the Paulo Steakhouse and Enchante. Inspired by the fateful flower at the heart of the story, the rose will be an idyllic setting for a pre-dinner aperitif or after-dinner cocktail. And they show a picture of this here. Oh, this gorgeous. is nice. This is really pretty. Um, I love the Beauty and the Beast theme. I'm a huge fan of Beauty and the Beast, so I love that it's getting this second wave. I mean, we're seeing Beauty and the Beast on the Disney Wish. We're seeing it at the Grand Floridian. We're seeing it um, in remade movies. Like it's it's really getting a second revival. And I love the fact that, because I think they found that Disney can make something very sophisticated, very- Sophisticated Disney. <laughs> I need to stop saying that. <laughs> uh, very elegant um, because, I mean, Beauty and the Beast is supposed to be an elegant- um, Yeah. Uh, type of movie, so I love this. I could totally see ourselves uh, getting a cocktail there or an aperitif before. I'm we haven't been to the Paulo. Grand Floridian one. <laughs> um, and then they talk a little bit about Census Spa. They don't really go into details on the pictures, um, but Census Spas is back. Um, they even have a fitness center. Um, where I thought was really cool is they really went into detail on the staterooms as oh well. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Beautiful staterooms, and it looked like it was two themes that I could see, Cinderella and Rapunzel. Was there or a Rapunzel? The, yep, there is a Rapunzel one. Let me show yes. you the Rapunzel photo. Here's a look at the Rapunzel oh, room. Yeah. So yeah, you can actually see this is a veranda room, and what's really neat about this is you've got, they've kind of re- worked the way the room flows. So you'll see that they've got in the very back, almost near the door, it looks like another closet. closet. So they are adding storage, which is always a good thing. Um, I do like that the TV is now mounted to the wall as opposed to on one of those like oh, arms yeah. that you kind of have to move. So it's mounted directly on the wall, right in front of the bed, which is convenient. And then that area where the TV is on the Fantasy and Dream and some of the older ships. Are just pushed over. They, yeah, and then they've got like little shelves down at the bottom there. Uh, but this is an example of the Tangled or the Rapunzel room. Um, looks like you've got the lantern scene, but you oh saw gosh. the Cinderella one That's and nearly like, died. Oh my gosh, it's so So pretty. you've got the Cinderella portraits here. I mean, you've got... I have that picture on the head. Not that big. No, not that it's big. Like, yeah, so... But I have it. They also include USBs, so that's nice. They're putting USB inputs on there. I know that's a big thing. Um, and then another picture of the um, stateroom. So you'll see that the bedding says Wish on it. 
and then you'll see that the veranda stateroom has that closet again. So I think yeah. that's kind of the thing that they're doing. They're adding more storage. The other thing I notice is where the TV is typically located on the fantasy and the dream. Looks like they put a giant mirror there. Oh yeah. A light up mirror, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, I wonder if they'll have the double bathroom still. Doesn't look like they have the storage ottoman. No. So they kind of gain storage, but then they lose the storage ottoman. <laughs> so that's that's kind of interesting. And here's a view of the porthole uh, room. Nice. So this is this is really nice too. Um, once again, there's a view of the TV directly above the bed. And you can also see the mirror that we were talking about. It's a light up mirror, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, so that's what the porthole room looks like. It looks like you could even, do they have curtains above the porthole on a porthole room? I don't I... remember. I know they had the curtains on the bed, but this one looks like it has curtains in front of the porthole, which would block out some of the light. Um, where I was really impressed was the bathrooms. They yeah. were gorgeous. Look at these bathrooms. I mean, this looks like something you'd see on HGTV. Yeah. Or like at the Maybe Riviera. It's very, ri it's very Riviera-like, actually. Yeah. It's nice. um, I wonder how big that shower is, because I have a feeling it's probably not as tall as it looks. But look at the the um, just the design. It looks very homey. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they they emphasize that a lot. Like you're mm -hmm. home away from home. Yep. The tile work looks beautiful. It uh, definitely looks very um, DVC Riviera like. Yeah. Um, another thing that was really cool is they showed the bunk beds. They had the uh, I don't those almost I don't know if that's painted on there or if that's I think light it's up. lights. You think it's light? I do. You think they're gonna put fiber optic lights on there? I yes. I don't know. That would be really cool. Where's the button for it? I bet there's a button. <laughs> well, this is an artist Look, rendering. It's right here. All these are artist renderings, so this it I could always change, up. but that's really cool. I wish I would be fighting to get the top on. A dream is, is a, a wish, wish your, heart makes. your heart makes. So that's really cool. What's really cool about the Disney Wish is they did say uh, that most of the 1200 staterooms offer some sort of ocean view. So they're kind of going away from having so many interior rooms Which and going great. more toward ocean view. Um, they say including 877 or 70% uh, with a spacious veranda. So 70% of the rooms on board are gonna have a veranda. That's a lot. I mean, that is what usually everyone buys is veranda. I like veranda out of all of them. Mm -hmm. And it says there will be 451 connecting doors that adjoin rooms to accommodate larger families. Uh, the Disney Wish will elevate the concierge experience with more than double the number of premium concierge staterooms and suites, including Disney's first ever staterooms located above the bridge. Wow. Boasting floor to ceiling windows that reveal breathtaking ocean views I I posted a picture of that. overlooking the bow of the ship. An exclusive lounge with private sun deck will be the perfect place for concierge guests to relax, sip a cocktail, and enjoy a premium level of dedicated service throughout the voyage. And that they'll also include four royal suites, which is the first ever on the Disney cruise ship, um, which is richly adorned, lavishly appointed suites that accommodate up to six guests and feature extravagant details and first class amenities. These include a pair of two story suites, the first of their kind within the Disney fleet, which will feature stunning statement pieces like an elegant spiral staircase oh my God. and a spectacular two deck high, high stained glass freeze. So to show you a picture of that. I wanna paint our staircase this color. So gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> There's a dining room table in it. So if you don't want to eat with everybody else, you can eat at the dining room table. I sure would. Oh my goodness, I'll you still, can see oh this spiral staircase in Wait, the background. They didn't go over. Well, if Cabana's is going to be different. Oh, that's a good point. I was going to say I would go down to Cabana's, get my food, and go back to my but room. But is there a Cabana's? <gasps> Check out that, that bathroom. Tub. Yep. Look at that tub. It's that, that looks very riviera -esque. Oh my god. We have that color sink. Faucet. <laughs> Oh we were gosh. thinking sophisticated Disney. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, beautiful view of the water from the bathroom. And it looks like a rainfall shower head too. Love you know, that. I'm going to... Mm. <laughs> 
Very, very cool. Then at the very end of the video, it says bookings open May 27th. Visit DisneyCruise.com or contact your local travel agent for details. So that we now have a date. We now have a date, Jen. And you know what? It's going out of Port Canaveral. That's what it looks like. It says we, I looked it up. It says its maiden voyage is setting sail summer 2022. A five-night cruise to Nassau, Bahamas and Disney's private island Castaway Key on June 9th, 2022, followed by an inaugural season of three and four night cruises from Port wow. Canaveral. So there you go. That it proves, needs to be longer. <laughs> that proves my thought process. And this is actually really smart on Disney's behalf. Everyone is gonna want to ride this ship. Yeah. So make the maiden voyage a five-nighter. And then from that point forward, it takes on essentially the Disney Dreams itinerary they of need to four, be yep, short um, three and four night trips, high turnover, get as many people on the ship because this is going to bring a lot of people back to the Disney Cruise Line. We're going to have um, to do a back to back. I can't. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't. I'm, you're going to have to pry <laughs> me off that ship. And then it says uh, bookings general public on May 27th. Very cool. This is awesome. Is this literally everything you wanted? And like, I, I'll be honest, this was way more than I thought it was going to be revealed to us. I oh, thought yeah. maybe we might have found out maybe some of the kids club stuff, but they revealed a lot. And there's still a whole lot that they have not released or going to release until closer to the. Uh, yeah. The well, maybe. if you think about it, we've all been deprived of cruises for so long mm -hmm. that like, I mean, people want something. Yeah. So they delivered they really delivered now the real question that i have is once this goes into um sailing yeah which is summer 2022 it takes on the disney dreams itinerary yeah what does the dream do the dream doesn't still run the same cruise it's got to do something else does the uh, dream stay in port canaveral or does it end up going to miami i know they flirted around with or magic are they gonna in miami. Do like hawaii could be you could, but usually the wonder is kind of out on the west coast doing Alaska and Hawaii. Um, Maybe I don't they'll know. have another ship. It's possible. Two over there. We always wondered what would happen when the Wish was introduced. Um, the Wish ends up looking like it's going to do the three or four night Bahaman cruise. So then the Dream goes somewhere. Does the Dream take on the Western and Eastern Caribbean cruises? Possibly. Then what happens to the Fantasy? There's all sorts of questions. But we won't know a little bit more of that until closer to the, um, uh, I would imagine, when they release the summer 2022 itineraries, we'll get a better idea of what's going on with the itineraries of other ships now that the wish is kind of thrown into the mix. So, very cool. Jen, were you happy with what you saw? I cried the whole time. Were you excited? Yeah. Are you excited for the Disney wish? I, I want to go on there. No, I'll stay on there. <laughs> and never come off. Ever. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, guys. No more YouTube. I'm just going to work for Disney Cruise Line. <laughs> anyway. So if you like the video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you can't wait to get on a Disney Cruise again, also give it a big thumbs up. And comment down below what your favorite part was. Yeah. It's all my favorite. I, just, I can't wait. <laughs> and if you want to join the trek and follow us on future cruise videos and future theme park videos, Jen, tell them what to do. Make sure to tap that subscribe button and tap that notification bell to become a super subscriber. And until next time, see, see you real soon. soon.